Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its technical analysis. If you're new, welcome and if you are returning, welcome back and I really do hope that you find my analysis every week useful and applying it to your own trading. So um, we start off with the week ahead when it comes to fundamentals and sentiment because that's what really drives the market and we understand fundamentals and sentiment because we want to understand value and bargain and where we're what we're buying at bargain prices so um, in the week ahead trading economics website um, we have next week's important release include US inflation that's very important um, And that really sets the tone for the Federal Reserve Central Bank monetary policy, whether they're going to be holding or cutting rates. A lot of uh, traders are pricing in, I say a lot, but uh, traders are pricing in um, a a rate cut. This has actually gone down um, slightly since, I think, Friday. Um, This was at about 32%. And now it's gone down to about 25. And this is just a the CME Group FedWatch tool. And this gives a guide on what the sentiment is and what the financial institutions are doing um, and pricing in with regards to rate cuts and rate holds and hikes. So Federal Reserve, I think, has a 25% chance based on um, financial institutions' sentiment and their positioning on a, an ease a cut or 75 percent is no change so um, sentiment wise um, potentially there could be a cut and this was really based on last week's um, figures non-farm change um, kind of added to that and uh, it was the lowest figure in a while 75,000 jobs were added which potentially uh, means that the US economy is slowing down. So no, you know, no increase in jobs, massive decrease in new jobs created. So um, inflation is definitely now being watched. And if it comes in, you know, way under target, then I guess that the Federal Reserve may start to look to cut interest rates but for now if inflation is at their two percent target then we can uh, uh, assume that the federal reserve may want to hold and have a wait and see approach so um again coming into this week's uh, uh news data so you've got uk unemployment monthly gdp and trade balance china foreign trade consumer prices um, i think that's going to be important as well and retail sales japan final first quarter gdp growth and machinery orders that's going to be an important one for japan and australia unemployment figures business and consumer morale so uh, we've got quite a lot going on this week from a sentiment perspective we have um the front pages of you know bloomberg we have really um the trade war still in the background um, when it comes to the uh, G20 uh, meeting they are uh, focused on that you also have Italy confident of complying with your fiscal rules so uh, that's in Europe European risk at the moment um, from Reuters you have Trump is confident Mexico will enforce new immigration deals so that if they do then that could maybe ease some of the risk off sentiment um, because uh, Donald Trump, you know, was potentially in um, enacting, I guess, some uh, some trade uh, tariffs on the Mexican economy, which meant that, um, again, a lot of uncertainty as to what he was doing with regards to potentially trade conflicts and also from Market Watch. We have, oh, the uh, Trump suspends plans to impose tariffs on Mexico after reaching a deal. So um, this could be potential risk uh, or less risk off when it comes to uh, the dollar. So potential dollar buying opportunity this week. So let's get into the technicals. 
and we start off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index. So from uh, last week, what we had was prices come up into the supply zone and again, a bit of weakness. If we look at really what's happened over the past, you know, probably like, you know, year or so, we've had this um, massive, you know, long term uptrend. And this is really due to, again, fundamentals and the US dollar being the strongest economy, um, raising interest rates um, out of really the um, the major uh, economies. And now we're getting into a cycle where we could potentially be entering into a bit of a downturn. So what you saw, what you're seeing now is a bit of uncertainty around the dollar and you've had prices come down a bit. And this is just normal, these are pullbacks doesn't mean you should sell the dollar. Well, that's a question that you have to answer. And really the Dow Jones dollar index is a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the Euro, Yen, the British pound and the Australian dollar. Um, so we did get a bit of a sell off, which is probably really due because prices don't go up forever. So um, if we enter this week into, um, you know, and uh, the interest rates as we just spoke about come out as expected or even maybe a bit better, then we could have um, move to the upside. So let's go to the chart. So what again we're looking for this week potentially is a move to the upside or what you'd be looking for is for prices to kind of drift down and then you know move to the upside if you're looking to buy the dollar, if you're looking to sell the dollar this week we could potentially be looking at this supply zone look at supply from here as we've made a new low new lower low so you've got your supply zone here so then what you'd be looking for is a move back up to this area before looking at getting short so again, it all depends really on, um, you know, dollar sentiment this week. Moving on to the dollar yen. And the dollar yen from last week, risk being um, really off. The yen is a beneficiary and it strengthens in a risk off environment. So with the Trump trade wars with China, we did have a bit of a move lower and now we've got bit of a wait and see approach with the yen. Um, they could get some positive sentiment as well. Trade deals could be done. We could, you know, the Chinese could come out and actually say, you know what, we'll do a deal. And in that case, risk would be more on than off. And we could see a buying opportunity um, at the moment. But again, with the dollar being potentially sentiment wise a bit weak, then we could see some downside, but we're in a wait and see position. This is a nice buying opportunity to be fair. I like this area of demand. So if we believe that the dollar is gonna gain a bit of strength and inflation is going to, going to come in to the market, then what we'd be doing, if we go to the chart, is looking for some buying opportunities right now to the upside. And if we were, looking at sell trades, then we'd be looking at really prices to come up to this daily supply zone before um, looking for short trades, or we would have to wait for price to break lower. This creates then a supply zone as the uh, supply would take out demand and then wait for price to come back into this supply zone and then look for some short trades around here. So this is gonna be purely, if you're buying the Japanese yen, it'd be you know, risk off. And really what you wanna do is look at the headlines and see um, what the sentiment is before basing your trading decisions on just uh, dollar strength or yen strength. So moving on to the dollar Swiss. And the dollar Swiss this week, again, the Swiss franc being a beneficiary of risk off sentiment. The Swiss franc will tend to strengthen. And again, there was some negative sentiment around the US dollar as well as the uh, 
the non-farm numbers. So what you've got is a move all the way pretty much down here, taking out all this demand. There was no demand fundamentally or sentiment wise for the um, for the dollar. When I say no demand, um, I mean, there was probably a little bit of demand, but the market obviously is thinking that risk is off. Hence the reason why you shouldn't base your trading decisions solely on technical analysis. Fundamentals will give you and risk sentiment will give you your directional bias, right? Um, and again, that's not to say that you should necessarily be buying the Swiss franc, but um, we know that this week, this is pretty much what's happened and the data has shown it. So looking at the uh, dollar Swiss, we are down into Bit of, a, bit of a level where we've got two demand zones there. Demand and demand. All right. This level, I think for now, I'm going to probably say it's gone. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to. This is a bit of a supply zone, but it's not the strongest supply zone. The reason why I say that is because my rules really dictate that um, you want to see a lower low before creating a supply zone. But because we've closed down here and that level of demand pretty much is uh, is from, a, from around this level, this 99 level, I would probably say is gone. Um, I'm willing to put this as a supply zone. So what you want to do is look for prices to come up to here before looking to get short. If I was looking to get long based on the uh, demand zones, I wouldn't be getting long based off of that previous demand zone, which was actually around here, right? which was that zone there. I'd be waiting for prices to kind of come down into this demand zone here before looking at some long trades and I like this and uh, many of the traders will also understand that taking the course that this is a nice CPR retracement CPR zone as well very nice CPR zone here at this uh, this level which put a uh, Resistance zone, yeah. So I do like this as a nice CPR level. So um, in this area, nice buying opportunity if you're looking to buy the dollar. Again, you want to probably see some uh, some some dollar strength. Again, we would look at the dollar index if that starts to turn up and the uh, dollar strength starts to come into the market as we're down into this demand zone. Then we're looking for buy trades. If not up here, then look for sell trades. Moving on to the dollar CAD. And the dollar CAD, the Canadian dollar has actually strengthened. Got some very good news last week regarding employment, way above expectations of 5,000 uh, new jobs. So it increased to 27,500. And then unemployment rate also went um, uh, beyond expectations. Great numbers for the Canadian dollar so looking at charts and what we want to see is the CAD we can see that really price is now taken out you know supplies taken out demand so there's been an appetite for buying the Canadian dollar as you're buying the quote currency and it's taking out demand right here for the dollar All right so we're down into this decent demand zone down here now so let's go to the charts and update this so what we have now is the Canadian dollar strengthening so what we have let's uh, go to that to that you can update this here as well you got supply and this is proof of value so it's basically prices have proven that the Canadian dollar was a bargain at this price and you can see what's been happening here so into next week if you are looking to buy the
Canadian dollar, then you'd be looking for potential pullbacks into a level of supply like this before looking at getting short. If you are looking at buying the dollar at the moment, then this area of demand is where you'd be looking to really start to buy the dollar. But just be in mind, be aware that this level is touched several times, once, twice, three times. So at the moment you're buying dollar strength or US dollar strength if there is any against a quite strong Canadian dollar sentiment wise so maybe long trades on this currency pair aren't the best um, uh, uh, trading opportunity uh, at the moment I'd probably say maybe to the short side if you are looking at um, trading this currency pair so waiting for you know, potentially a pullback into supply before looking at a short trade <laughs> so next is the New Zealand dollar US dollar and this week we came down into this demand zone here and due to US dollar weakness we did get a massive move up and New Zealand dollar has been doing actually quite well when it comes to um, uh, their economy so this is what you're seeing you're seeing um, some weakness on the US dollar and strength on the New Zealand dollar and you can see where prices have really been taking out a lot of uh, the supply zone for the US dollar so going to the charts there wasn't any appetite really for buying the dollar at any of these supply zones due to the uh, the bad data right, which is increased price at the moment to a decent level really to try and get short if you were looking at buying the US dollar so right now we have prices up to here we could see some profit taking going on at this level we also have um, a level that's been used once twice three times support term resistance within this supply and demand zone so a decent short if that doesn't work out and we get some more dollar weakness from a sentiment perspective you'd be looking at some of these areas here got supply you've also got a bit of supply around there if you're looking at buying uh, the New Zealand dollar then you'd really be looking for prices to kind of come back into this demand zone here so prices would need to come all the way back down into here before looking at buying opportunities we can delete that as well so I think we could potentially be entering now into a ranging market um, at some point between these uh, this supply and this demand zone we've had a nice little trend down and after a trending market we tend to enter into a ranging market now is this the place where price may enter into a range could do especially with uh, inflation numbers coming out and if inflation numbers meet targets or they're not as bad as what is once thought then this could be a decent buy for the US dollar again keep your eye on the dollar index so pound dollar is the next currency pair to analyze and the pound really has been suffering from negative sentiment due to Brexit a lot of uncertainty we've got the conservative government leader uh, contest and uh, Brexit is still on the table so we did get this week a bit of uh, a uh, uh, some demand at this zone right so you had the demand zone you also had a level of um, support as well within that demand zone so you had definitely proven value but is this pound strength or is this basically based off of dollar weakness and I think this is more dollar weakness than pound strength there is a nice zone this is coming into I do like this 128 127 level to try and look for short trades so at the moment <clears throat> you do have this supply zone so looking at short trades You've got an opportunity right now and you've also got that level that 128 level probably around there is my preferred area what I want to do is probably get rid of this longer term demand zone got demand here we 
we've also got a bit of demand here as we did, did make higher highs there. So prices, if you do want to be a buyer of the British pound, you'd be looking for that be your first demand zone. But I would say the better area if you're looking to buy the British pound would be down into this lower demand zone, this 126 area. But for me, this looks like a decent short trades um, opportunity. And if not, then it'd be really up to this higher level, this 1.30 level before looking at any kind of uh, short trades, which you're getting in really the dollar at a better price. You're buying the dollar at a better exchange rate. Because um, in the lead up to Brexit, uh, which really is gonna be October the 31st, um, there's gonna be a lot of uncertainty, a lot of uncertainty with the uh, British pound. So uh, short trades for me all the way on this currency pair, Euro dollar, and the euro dollar <clears throat> since last week again we've had um, some dollar uh, weakness and we did come up to this area here looked like it was selling off and then you've got some weak um, non-farm numbers so demand for the US dollar um, again faded and uh, the euro kind of works in opposition um, to the Dollar. So when traders are not buying the US dollar um, in certain situations, they kind of go into the euro. So you've seen euro rally, but Europe isn't doing any better than the US dollar. So this for me is just um, is uh, allowing me to buy the dollar at a better price, you know, to get short. And that's just my opinion. So looking at the euro dollar. In fact, what I should have done is drawn the supply zone from there, All right? So if you draw the supply zone from there, as that was a, the, um, the swing, we haven't quite broken this level yet. So if prices do start to turn lower from Sunday's open, I think that is a decent sell. If not, you'd be looking for prices really to come up into this zone before looking at sell trades and again look for structures within this wider supply zone either on the daily or intraday all right so within that supply zone so because traders will say well this is quite a wide zone right how do i know what area this is going to you know bounce off of well within that wide zone you do have daily resistance resistance so you could wait for price to come all the way up to here, or you could go down into maybe a four hour and look for some intraday zones. And it looks to be one right here. So see it around there, just around there. Move back a little bit. So yeah, just on the underside of that level where you have resistance, bit of support, so a bit of uh, resistance here, support, resistance, bit of support where it held, bit of resistance there. So we could look at the 1.137 level here as a level to look for first shorts, but I think this 1.14 round number will be, and you know, above would be the, probably the optimum trade to the downside if you were looking at short trades looking at long trades and let's delete this and let's delete this this would be where your demand zone is right there delete that so you'll be looking for really a pullback into this level here before looking at buy trades if you're looking to buy the euro and take advantage of this this uptrend over the past you know week or so moving on to the euro yen in the euro yen again some risk off sentiment coming into the market um did have a bit of a you know move slightly move down but now we've got a bit of a respite so um euro has strengthened a little bit Let's go to the charts. All right, so there was a bit of supply here. That's what it looked like on the intraday. You would have probably seen if you were going trading the, the one hour. There was a trading opportunity right here up into that supply zone. 
you look for a short trade, decent maybe one to one type move if you're basing it off of that uh, engulfing type candle. But then we've had, you know, again a bit of a respite. Markets don't move down forever. So now we're up into this uh, supply zone. I still think that there's a risk off environment. So if you're looking to trade the yen, then you'd really be looking for prices to come up into a bit more confluence this area here before looking at short trades or again looking at intraday levels before looking at potential short trades there we can get rid of this supply zone as prices have made new highs and I'm going to add this level here as a level of demand as we've taken out some supply right there so if you're looking to buy the euro then again waiting for pullbacks into the lower end of this area before looking at getting long but risk off the Japanese yen does well in a risk off environment so anywhere from probably now and this higher level on a demand on a uh, daily time time frame chart within this supply zone is you know very decent I do like that area moving on to the Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar this week we had a bit of uh, again dollars um, US dollar weakness so there really wasn't any kind of a um, supply zone working for on this currency pair now we are where we are around this 7 0 0.7 round number which I do like for a potential short as the Australian dollar is still very weak they're on the interest rate cutting cycle and the expectation is for them to cut so this could just be a potential pullback and I like this for potential short if not if this trade probably doesn't work out depending on the entry then you'd be looking at this area here as a for short trades um, this supply zone is still here it's still valid same thing for the uh, for the move above but short trades depending on again what happens with the US dollar um, could get some again some negative sentiment but I think overall the, the US dollar is is really the, uh, the the pair to buy on this 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 currency pair the Australian dollar is for me a sell and they're most affected by the Chinese trade war as well but again just dependent on the data that comes out for the US and also the Australian dollar and finally we have the Aussie yen and the Aussie yen this week had a bit of a turn up into this supply zone here again I think overall that as long as risk is off and trade wars are still in the papers you could still get a move higher all right you still could get a move to the high side I say high but you know to the upside but looking at the chart that is pretty probably just you know just some sort of pullback and uh, again unless the trade war is really just you know is resolved I think there is a there are a lot of fears when it comes to what's happening globally global slowdown so the Australian dollar isn't going to do well as it is a commodity currency so commodity currencies don't do well in risk off environments going to delete this one for now and add a bit of a demand zone right here so if you are looking at a potential reversal you're looking at prices to really kind of come down to this demand zone right here before looking at long trades um, but if you're continuing to trade the Japanese yen and risk off to the downside then you're looking at you know this higher area here this 76.2 level or thereabouts or just above this 77 round number would be the optimum short so uh, that's it for this week hope you enjoyed it please like subscribe and share if you do have any comments uh, definitely leave them in the section box below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible so guys take care hope you have a great trading week and I'll speak to you soon